Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about the quadratic formula. Basically, I'm going to show you why it works, which is how is it developed? How do we know that this formula will always give us the answer to our given equation? So let's start by quickly reviewing the quadratic formula. It says that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what the quadratic formula is, it's a formula that solves an equation like this. So if I'm given ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then I can find the values of x by applying the quadratic formula. There are a few rules. Um, a, b, and c have to be real numbers, and a, the leading term, can't be zero. We have to have that x squared in there for us to use the quadratic formula. So let's get back to why does it work? Basically, we're just using completing the square to solve for x. It's just a little trick. And I'm going to assume that you know what completing the square is. It says we have x squared plus bx. Notice that the coefficient here is 1. That if we were to take half of the b term and square it, that it would perfectly work out to x plus b over 2 squared. We don't have to expand the b over 2. We don't have to factor it. Like, we know this is always going to work. It's a process. So we're going to use this and apply it to our ax squared plus bx plus c. The first thing we have to do is make the leading coefficient a 1. We cannot have a number other than 1 in front of our x squared term. So we're just going to divide everything by a. It becomes x squared plus bx over a plus c over a equals 0. The next thing I'm going to do is move the c over a over to the right. I'm trying to isolate the x terms and get a number on the right side. So now I have x squared plus bx over a equals negative c over a. I'm just going to change that slightly and use that b over a as a coefficient for x. So I just rearranged the way that term looked. It's still the same value. I just wrote the b over a as a coefficient to the x. So to complete the square, we're going to square half of the coefficient of x and add it to both sides. So now that I have the coefficient isolated, I can divide it by 2, square it, add it to both sides. So I take the b over a, I divide it by 2, and I square it. I do that to the left to keep things equal. I have to also do that on the right. We can make this look a little bit better. b over a divided by 2 is b over 2a. On the left side, we're just going to factor. We are not going to expand the b over 2a squared. We're following a process of completing the square, which is I already know the factoring. x squared plus b over a x plus b over 2a squared is equal to x plus b over 2a all squared. So I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do anything. I take the x squared, it becomes an x. I take the b over 2a, I put it in the parentheses. The square moves outside. That's following the completing the square process. On the right side, though, we still have a little bit of work. So we are going to expand the b over 2a squared on the right side. I square b, that's b squared. I square 2a, that gives me 4a squared. Now I want to combine these terms, which says I need a common denominator. My common denominator is going to be 4a squared. So I'm going to multiply the negative c over a by 4a over 4a. That way I'm just multiplying by 1, and I get this new term, negative 4ac over 4a squared. Now that I have a common denominator, I can add the numerators. As I add the numerators of negative 4ac and b squared, I'm just going to put the b squared term first. That way it's kind of descending order when I look at it, and it's going to match the final product that we already know because we know the quadratic formula. So now I have x plus b over 2a squared equals b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. At this point, I've kind of done the completing the square, so now I use the square root method. The square root method says take the square root of both sides. So on the left side, I take the square root of x plus b over 2a squared. On the right side, I take the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. On the left side, we're going to have the square root and the square just go away. On the right side, though, I'm going to put in the plus or minus to say I know I'm going to get two solutions. I'm going to take the square root of the numerator, which we cannot simplify. It's just the square root of b squared minus 4ac. But in the denominator, the square root of 4a squared becomes 2a. So our last step is to get x by itself. We're going to move that b over 2a over to the right. Luckily, when I move the b over 2a over to the right side, I already have a common denominator. They both have a 2a. 
as it moves over, it goes from positive B over 2A to negative B over 2A. So now I have negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, which is in fact the quadratic formula.